What chapter are you on in your life? That's what I want to talk about today in this Relax, Focus, Succeed video. First, I want to introduce a tiny little change in branding. We have a new logo that we're using on our website, and it's inspired by this photo that I took in Hawaii in 2019. This is looking out over Hilo and Mauna Loa in the distance. It's got a nice rainbow across the top, and it just seemed to fit with the logo. Over on my blog at relaxfocussucceed.com, I recently wrote an article about thinking of your life in terms of episodes or chapters. You know, if you think about a TV show that you really, really like, it has different episodes and you're always looking forward to finishing the mini story that's very short term and then looking forward to a whole new episode. That's a little like book chapters where if you really like the book, the closer you get to the end, the less you want it to end because you're like, oh, no, I love this story. I want it to go on forever. So, so whatever your favorite fiction book is, you never want it to end. Well, when you think about your life, I think it's important to, to look at the things that you're going through as episodes, but very compartmentalized. Let me go into a little bit of detail about this. In the book, Relax, Focus, Succeed, I talk about how we are all many people. So there's the you at work, and there's the you at home, and there's the you in your community, and the you out playing sports, and the you in your church or whatever. Right? You have these different people that you are. It's not, these are not necessarily roles you play. These are actually who you are, but they're who you are in different settings, in different ways of, of being in the world. So not only should you think of your life in terms of episodes, but you should think of it as layered episodes. You know, in my family life, there was the time when I was uh, single. Then there was the time that I was married. And then there was the time that I had a newborn. And then there was a time that I had a, a young kid and then a, a, a teenager and right, Da, 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 da. There are all of these various chapters to that piece of my life. And I could, if I chose to, write a biography or autobiography about me in my personal life. Skip ahead over on this side at work. There's the me who went to school and, and, the, and the, that chapter ended when I graduated. And then there was the me who took a first job. And then there was the chapter when that ended. And then there was the me who went to graduate school and the me who spent some time as a radio disc jockey. And there's the me who uh, took a first real job outside of teaching and the first time I had a business. And the second time I had a business and the third time I had a business. These are all chapters that I can write about this part of who I am. And again, I could write a whole story about that without touching on the various different elements of my life. One of the most important things that you need to do is when you think about your life, is think about how there's stress in moving from one to the other of these various roles that you play. Very often, we see it most commonly in the stress between work and home, between our personal life and our business life. And people say, oh, you know, why do you have to bring your work home? Or why do you have to bring your home life to work? Those are both potential causes of frustration and stress. And I'm a firm believer that the more consistency you have between the various roles you play, the less stress you have. So consistency means low stress. Inconsistency means high stress. And you can take lessons from the various pieces of your life and use them in other pieces. You know, your, your book can be filled with chapters where you learn lessons from each of the various chapters in different pieces of your life. Too many people address the world and address their own lives, really, as if it is a continuum from point A to point Z and everything in the middle and you're just going to do what you're going to do. But the reality is 
you have segments of your life. You can literally point to a segment and say, that's what I was like when I was a teenager. That's what I was like when I was in my 30s. That's what I was like when I was in my 50s. Those are all still you. And you can think more holistically about your life. And there's a certain irony. You can think more holistically about your life by dividing it into these different segments and making sure that there's more consistency between all of them. I recently came to the decision to close down one of my podcasts, at least temporarily. This podcast has been going for about four years and, you know, it had a certain level of success, but it takes a certain amount of time, energy, organization, a little bit of money, right? It's, it's got a place that it fills in the bigger picture, but it was time to bring that chapter to an end. It had contributed positively to my business and to, uh, you know, my enjoyment of life. I enjoyed doing the podcast. But in all things, there's always the next chapter. And so we should not be too stressed out like, oh, if I put this thing to sleep, if I stop doing this thing, will I let people down? Will I have broken some kind of big promise, right? And I encourage you not to worry too much about things like that. You need to figure out where your happiness fits in the big picture. And if you live completely to meet others' expectations, there's a stark reality I want you to be aware of. One of my fundamental beliefs about life, and, I, and the reason I say, say it's a fundamental belief is I think it is so true. It's true for you, it's true for me. It's true in my business, it's true in my personal life. And that fundamental belief is that most of the time, nobody's paying attention. So even if you've got a popular blog, the reality is it's not the center of anybody's life. It's probably not even the center of your life. So whatever you've got, a blog, a podcast, some commitment that you've made to a volunteer group, whatever it is, people come and they go. You know, even, even in employment, people come to work for you, but they don't stay forever. You go to work for somebody else, but you're not going to stay there forever. And if you're lucky, you get five or 10 or 15 years of a great relationship. But at some point, things change. The world keeps spinning all the time. The worst case scenario of what happens with this is that people feel obligated to continue doing something that they no longer enjoy, that no longer uh, fulfills them with regard to happiness, interaction, building relationships, money, whatever it might be. When these things no longer bring happiness into your life, you should not continue to do them simply because of some perception that other people expect this and that you'll be letting other people down if something happens. You know, way back when I first wrote Relax, Focus, Succeed, my daughter was very, very young, and, and I said in there that I hope that when she gets older that I will always be there for her and let her know that she is more important than anything and she should never feel trapped in any decision that she has made. Skip ahead about 20 years, and one day she called me from college and she said, I am unhappy. I made a bad decision with the college and I have not made the friends that I wanted to have, and I it's just not what I was looking for. And I immediately said, fine, you should come home because you are more important to me than anything, and I don't want you to ever feel trapped because there's always another college, there's always another opportunity, there's always another thing, and no one should be miserable feeling like they have to live up to someone else's expectations. And the reason that I wrote that originally, way back when she was little, is that I was remembering a woman who had come into my office when I was teaching college, and she was completely overwhelmed and distraught, and she ended up committing suicide because she could not live up to her parents' expectations. And that really hit me really, really hard. It, I, I, wasn't, I didn't feel like I was to blame or anything like that, but it really struck me that no one ever should feel so 
much pressure from other people's expectations that they are depressed and feel trapped and unable to cope with things. So please do yourself a favor and don't get trapped into this vision that there was a perfect beginning and a perfect middle and there has to be a perfect end and I have to keep going down this road, whether it's in your personal life, your business life, your community life, or any other role that you play. Other people expect things of you, but only because you have led them to expect those things. And it's okay to lead them to expect something else. You know, too many times in our lives, we have to learn this lesson again and again and again, that you worry about something and you freak out about it and you think about it and you go over it in your head a hundred times. And when you finally have the difficult discussion, other people say, wow, totally unexpected. Uh, you know, I'm going to support you and let's figure out what else to do. And it's, it's not that it's nothing to them, but it's way less than what you've built up inside your brain. So as you think about how your different selves go through this life, think of what you're doing now as an episode. And it'll be an episode that at some point it will come to an end, but that just means it's the beginning. It's the opportunity for the next episode. So if, if the chapter that you're in, has to come to an end, that's okay. As long as there's another chapter, you get to go on and evolve as a character, evolve as a human being, and move to the next chapter of your life. And what I think you'll find if you give people a chance is that more often than not, they will continue to support you in the next chapter of your life, in the next episode, in the next thing that you become and the next role that you get to play in your never ending story. I hope you take this as a positive message. And if you have any questions, comments, whatever, put them down below and check out my blog at relaxfocussucceed.com. Subscribe to this channel, like this video, share it with your friends, and I will see you next time on the next Relax Focus Succeed video.